Hello everyone, today I thought I would show you how to make a snail trail block. To make this block you need two different colors of fabric and you need to cut two squares from each one measuring at 2 and 5 eighths inches, one from each at 3 and 7 eighths inches, and then one from each at 5 and 1 eighth, and one more from each at 6 and 7 eighths of an inch. These are some really odd sizes and I will have all the measurements in the description box below. So to start, we're just going to put our bigger ones to the side. We do need to cut those on the diagonal later on, but we'll do that later on. We'll just start with our smallest pieces. And with those, we need to make a little four patch. So you should have two of each color measuring at two and five eighths of an inch. Like I said, they're odd sizes, so I will try to repeat them, but they will be in the description box below. So this is simple. You just want to make a little four patch and you want to make sure that you have your colors alternating so that you get this effect. It gets a little mini checkerboard look. This block actually comes together very easily, I at least found. And what I did here is I made sure that I pressed to the black, that way then I would know that my seams would nest, and I like that because then I can get my points to look nicer. So now we are going to take our next smallest size, which is 3 and 7 eighths. We should have one of each color here. And we're just going to cut those on the diagonal, so just take your ruler and very carefully line it up, and then from point to point cut. And I am saying carefully because I have a tendency of letting my ruler slip and then it flies the wrong way and then I have to recut my pieces. And well, that's a waste of fabric, so just go slow if you're anything like me. And I'm sure you've noticed this is definitely not the colors that I usually work with, but this is for my daughter, so bright colors it is. So now we have two triangles from each color and we need to sew them onto our square and we need to make sure that we're sewing them opposite of each other so that our block will end up looking like this. So we need to make sure that the blacks are opposite from each other and the pinks are opposite from each other, or I guess whatever colors you're using. And we need to make sure that we're sewing them onto the center. So I like to fold my triangles in half and then just finger press it and give myself a little crease there. And that marks my center point, which I can then line up with my seam. For this part, it's actually fairly simple because I know that that seam is the center point of my block. So I know if I line up my crease there, it's gonna be centered properly. And you'll notice that my points are sticking a little bit over on the edge of my block, but that's okay. That's all going to work out in the end. We're going to have some little dog ears to trim off, but no big deal. So now we need to take the next black triangle and make sure that we are putting it on the opposite side. I like to pin both of mine on at the same time. That way I know I'm not going to accidentally sew it on the wrong side because yes, that's something that I would totally do. So I'm just going to line this up here and then I'm going to take it over to the sewing machine and sew it with a quarter inch seam. I had filmed some of my sewing stuff not realizing that my daughter was there shaking the tripod so that that video was not usable. But anyways, I have my black ones on so now it's time to do the exact same thing with my pink ones and we're just going to center those, pin them down and then head over to the sewing machine and sew with a quarter inch seam. So this is what your block should look like at this point. You can see those little dog ears there. I'm just going to take my rotary cutter and give that a trim. You could use your scissors here if you wanted to, that's entirely up to you. But now we're going to do the exact same thing with our next round. So we're going to take the squares that are measuring 5 and 1 eighths and we're going to cut those on the diagonal as well. And we are literally going to be repeating round 1. So you just do the exact same thing. Make sure that you're laying out your triangles opposite of each other and then finding your center points, pinning them down and then sewing them with a quarter inch seam. There is a slight difference in this round because finding your center point on your triangle, same thing, fold it in half and give it a little crease. But on your block now, you're going to want to fold that in half as well just to make sure that you get your center point. You don't want to match it up with that seam there because it might not be 100% accurate. So I would recommend folding it in half and giving that a crease and then you will have your center point. And I'm kind of thinking about doing this in a scrappy version. Let me know in the comments what you think if I should try this with scraps and see how that looks. And I would also really appreciate it if you would consider supporting my channel by just simply liking these videos and commenting on them or even consider subscribing if you haven't already. I really do appreciate all the support I have found here and all the friends that I have made. Once I have sewn my black triangles on, I'm just going to do the exact same thing with my pink ones. And as you can see, I've already taken my last triangles that I will be sewing on in the next round and cut them in half as well, which is what we're up to now. I've trimmed off my dog ears and again, we're just going to repeat the last round place our triangles so that they are opposite of each other, find our center points, and sew them on. Once that's done, we're ready to square it up. All right, I have finished it along with some other ones. I squared mine up at 12 inches. And now on this part, you have different options on how you want to lay them out. You'll get different effects with each layout. And I think I love blocks where you can just kind of play around with them and you get different looks. 
This is just going to be a little mini wall quilt for my daughter's room because she was complaining that I had wall quilts and she didn't have one. So of course we're going to make one for her. But I'll just spin these blocks around to give you an idea of what you can get. And then I will let her decide how she wants me to sew it together once she gets home from school. Like I said, I love blocks that have different options and variations. And again, let me know in the comments if I should try to make this with scraps because I'm kind of thinking it would look kind of cool. Anyways, that is all I have for you today. Thank you so much for stopping by and until next time.